Welcome. Well, you are at home with Jim and Joy, and you know, you are an important part of our EWTN family, and we would love to hear from you. All you have to do is email us, jimandjoy at EWTN.com. This is a live show. You're alive. I'm, I'm alive. alive. Thank God alive. we're alive. And we have Danny Abramowitz, and he's alive, and we're so excited. He is the author of a new book, Crossing the Goal, yeah. A Saint Goes Marching On. So we are going to have an awesome Absolutely. conversation with I him today. I meant to bring a football with me. Ah. Danny Abramowitz was a, an NFL star, all pro uh, receiver. And I wanted to say I threw a, a pass to him. To you him. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But thinking about Danny and thinking about athletics, and he's going to be sharing so much uh, in this area, um, you have to know who you are in athletics. You have to know who your coach is, what he desires, plays. But you have to know your opponent, mm -hmm. right? You have to know your opponent. And if we take that athletic kind of idea into spirituality, who's our opponent? in spiritual athletics. Mm -hmm. The enemy, the devil. Satan, mm -hmm. is our opponent. How does he operate? And listening to Fulton Sheen recently, uh, the late Fulton Sheen, venerable Fulton Sheen, speaking about the diabolical. And there's so much in the video there. But you know, when we think about our enemy, you know, I often think about him as the accuser, the slanderer of the brethren. And we must be clear you know, when your enemy tells you he wants to kill you, as Bibi Netanyahu says from Israel, believe him. Right. Okay. So our adversary has said, I want to kill you <laughs> eternally. I take him seriously in mm -hmm. that. But I think of him as accuser. I think of him making a frontal assault on me and that I'll get that. But Fulton Sheen, Archbishop Sheen, you know, was, was saying, you know, Satan also comes as your defender as an encourager. And I was saying, like, w what's he talking about? And he's saying, when you're thinking about compromising, you know, your faith, uh, your love for your family, uh, who you are as a human person, whatever it might be, you know, you're thinking, you're being tempted. And that Satan comes to you, the diabolical comes to you, your opponent comes to you, you got to watch the, the films mm -hmm. and see what he does, comes to you and he defends you. You deserve this. Oh, it, it's, they just don't understand you. That's right. right. You're, you're exceptional. Right. Uh, you've suffered so much, you can have a little bit of this mm -hmm. and a little bit of that. I just thought that was real. Thank you for that. That we need to see that because when we don't, then we're duped. Mm -hmm. And I could see in my own life, there have been times where it wasn't really outright rebellion, but it was this seduction into mm -hmm. something. It seemed to make sense for me, even trying to help somebody else, but it wasn't the right thing. And after Satan seduces you, after he um, defends you, you have mm -hmm. the right to this when you really don't, then he becomes your accuser. Once you commit the sin, mm -hmm. whatever that sin might be, then he comes to you. You, you, know, you're not, you don't have a life Who worth, do you worth think living. You You'll never be the same. Right. There's mm -hmm. no redemption for you. And you do what Judas did. You, you might commit suicide mm -hmm. versus Peter who repented. Fulton Sheen says that when Jesus comes to you, when you're being tempted or tried to compromise, he comes as an accuser. I didn't think of Jesus as an accuser, but he's, he's not accusing you. He's talking about the behavior. Right. And he's saying to you, thou shalt not kill. Right. Thou shalt not commit murder. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not covet. And so he's accusing the behavior you're thinking about doing. And if you commit it, then he comes as your defender. And he shed his blood for you that you might know forgiveness. I think this is just so mm -hmm. important for us all to understand the operation of the enemy and more importantly, the operation of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Right, and so it, it is important. I mean, we, we see it in our marriage. The devil hates three things. He hates your life. He hates life. He hates marriage and he hates family. All places where mm -hmm. God loves, he hates mm -hmm. it. So he, if you don't think abortion is evil and diabolical, it is and it comes straight from the pit of hell and it's about to destroy life. If he can't destroy your life, he wants to destroy your marriage. Right. If he can't destroy your marriage, he'll go after your kids because he's out to conquer and divide. That's right. what he does, yeah. and he's evil. And, and we've seen people struggling in sin. I mean, I can remember a time even our own son was just, we said up, he said down, we said in, he said out. I mean, it was just a bad time being a parent. <laughs> and I looked at that yeah. boy, I got right in his eyeballs, and I said, Matthew, you have been captured by an alien. 
and I know who you are and I know whose you are and I will wait the devil out. And did I pray as a mother? Who was else going to pray like that? I had to draw my sword and fight and slice and dice the enemy with, and, and plead yeah. for the life of That's our right. son yeah. um, that he would not be taken over to the weaknesses and the sin that is there for us all. And, and his life was not only spared, but he's a sterling example of a godly man. And so is Danny Abramowitz, an EWTN favorite, crossing the goal. We'll be right back. You're not going to want to miss his testimony and his new book. Don't go away. an important part of our EWTN family and you know we want you to be a part of this live show. If you have a question for our guest Danny Abramowitz, give us a call during the live broadcast at 1-800-221-9460. Outside of North America you can reach us at area code 205-271 2980. You know, you can always send us an email at jimandjoy at EWTN.com, and hopefully we will use your question right here on the air. Well, I'm excited about this show today. <laughs> today we have a very familiar face to all of you, Mr. Danny Abramowitz. Some people around here call him Coach. He is the author of Crossing the Goal, A Saint Goes Marching On. You can go to his website, and it's crossingthegoal.com. Well, Danny Abramowitz, thank you so much for coming on At Home with Jim Joy. Thank you for having us. It reminds me, of, you remind me of my wife and I. You know, we just yeah. celebrated 50 years of marriage. Congratulations. Can you imagine God 50 you. years mm -hmm. with me? I'm mm -hmm. not just yeah. <laughs> the words She's yours. She's a saint. Yeah, right. She is a saint. <laughs> but you have to bring her with you next time. I mean, we'd love to speak to Claudia. She would be great. She don't yeah. want any part of this. On Cross to Go, we had uh, the other guys brought their wives. Yeah. Yeah. Claudia says, if you even think about bringing me, <laughs> I'll kill you. There'll be no more 51 years. But she's years, great, so though. I mean, she really yeah. has been uh, a prayer warrior in my life. And I started dating her in high school and uh, all these years, up through ups and downs and Three children, now four grandsons, so. There's nothing like that. Nothing like it. Mm -hmm. I mean, to look in the face of your, your loved one and to see all those years of being yes. together. All the solid things, all the crazy things, all the comebacks. I mean, that's the best See this life. bald head and gray hair? If I would have listened to her more, it would be <laughs> a lot better off. <laughs> and you used to have a lot of hair. I, I know. That your, your football oh, yeah, pictures and everything out. else. I'll tell you a funny story about that. I was coaching Jesuit High School in the... Uh, I told the guys, I said, you know, we're going to do these things and none of this long hair business, none of this, none of that. The next, when you've got real smart kids, you better watch out. Next day, they had a picture on the bulletin board. <laughs> it had me in a helmet with my with hair coming out. Yeah. Oh, gosh. I said, boys, I said, do as I say, not as I did. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you're, Bless your heart. Well, tell us a little bit about your own. I was going to say, you know, I wanted to get to the long hair thing is because you were playing professional ball. What were your years? Because that was a year of long, years 60, of long hair. Yeah, 67 <laughs> through 74. Uh, yeah. Most it was the Saints, then the 49ers. And then I retired and did the broadcast for five years. And then I sort of got into the business world out here. And that's where I really was lost. And, and finally, uh, through intervention of some friends, I went to AA on December the 15th, 1981. Yeah. And that started sort of my yeah. conversion experience okay. mm -hmm. on the way. Yeah. I had to get straight because I was a lost ball in high weeds there for a while. Yeah. But and you my, were born and raised in the Catholic Church, right? I was born and raised in Steubenville, Ohio, Catholic mm -hmm. Church. I knew what I knew the right things to do. But mm -hmm. what happens to uh, a guy like myself and a lot of these athletes now, they come from humble backgrounds and all of a sudden started having success and making lots of money. They don't know how to handle it. Mm -hmm. I didn't handle it properly. I, I had a wife and three kids, and I was acting foolish. Uh, and my wife hung in there through her perseverance, prayer, plus uh, other prayer warriors. Mm -hmm. But I confused her. See, my family wasn't lo uh, lost because of them. It was me. 
once I got straight, my family sort of come back. And now the normal things that you have in family mm -hmm. life, you know, mm -hmm. like you said with kids right. and stuff, mm -hmm. you're going to have that. Yeah. But not a dad that's totally out. See, out here, the dads are lo lost the job as spiritual heads of the family. Mm -hmm. And that's why you said the devil attacks mm -hmm. marriages, but they're, they do it through the man. Mm -hmm. What they're doing is separating the man and the woman. They're after the kids. Mm -hmm. So that's what's happening out here. And mm -hmm. it almost happened in our life. Lucky I had a wife that was stay prayed up. She yeah. saw the good in me. Yeah. You know, it's, it's something I was sharing with some folks that, uh, you know, you were going to be on the show. And some of them aren't regular, you know, watchers of EW10. So some guys, you know, and I said, you remember Danny Abramowitz? Says, yeah, yeah, like he was in, in, in end. He's catch passes and everything. Right. Yeah, yeah, with New England. So I said, no, yeah, right. New Orleans yeah. Saints. And so he said, you know, what's he doing? Is he still coaching or, yeah. or what's he doing? So a lot of people are just frozen in time with you there. Yeah. Then you have the EWTN crowd. Yeah. And they know you converted, a man of holiness, an evangelist, making disciples. And a lot of us don't know the in-between story of Danny. Yeah. And you've alluded to it a little bit. But I do want you to take some time. You've written this new book, Crossing the Goal. But go back to your early days in Steubenville, your own upbringing, your family. Tell us yeah. your story there. The influences well, still, in your you life. Know, Steubenville is a town. It was a steel mill coal mining town. Yeah. It's right on the tri-state area. It was right by Pittsburgh. So you have yeah. Ohio, West Virginia, and Pennsylvania, 10-mile radius. Very uh, immigrant-oriented back in those days because they came for the work. In, in, in the steel mills and the coal mine. Home of Dean Martin as well. Dean Martin, mm -hmm. Jimmy the Greek, you know. <laughs> all those but anyway, I was raised Catholic, you know, and, and everything in Steubenville was in neighborhoods. Like St. Anthony's was Italian right. parish. Mm -hmm. St. Peter's was Irish. St. Stanislaus, Polish. And uh, sports played a major role. And I played football, basketball, baseball. And then I met my wife in high school through my closest friend, mm -hmm. Tony D'Andre, mm -hmm. who introduced uh, to her. The Italian matchmaker. Yeah. <laughs> that, it was funny. Uh, you would be dating her, and uh, I'd have to go from the north side of town, was where I was living, to the south, where the Italians were. And I was, as I was walking up, the old Italian ladies would be sitting on, mm -hmm. there comes that a Polacca boy to see Claudia. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you yeah. know, and then I've, Got a football scholarship to Xavier University. I had one scholarship. Played there for four years. Got a good education. And then got drafted in the 17th round by the New Orleans Saints. That's how I ended up in New Orleans. And uh, a, a great story, the testament from my upbringing in Steubenville, the toughness. You never quit. Never let them know you're hurt. Get after them. Give it all you got. Right. Uh, when I went to training camp, I told Coach Tom Fears was our first coach, and I said, Coach, all I want is a fair chance. Mm -hmm. Okay, kid, okay, kid. So back in those days, you played uh, six exhibition games, 14 league games. So after the third exhibition game, knock came on the door. That's the Turk. Bring mm -hmm. your playbook. That means you're gone. Mm -hmm. I left the playbook. I went downstairs. I said, Coach, you didn't give me a fair chance before he could say anything. Mm -hmm. He says, you're serious, aren't you? I said, coach, I'm serious as a heart attack. Mm -hmm. He says, okay, go upstairs. I'm going to give you a chance. I walked out. Whew, that one worked. <laughs> <laughs> but I end up starting the next game and caught like eight or nine passes in the game and, and end up making a team and then had success in my football career. Still practiced my faith, but a lot of times uh, – half hung over or whatever, not really no prayer life to speak of. My wife didn't have a real good, because I, I didn't have one, she she didn't have it. Mm -hmm. um, and I got caught up in all the hoop to law of New Orleans and the, the social scene and all that, and then finally retired. And I said I could do it in the business world, and the same type of a life. Here we were married now, three kids, and I was acting like a fool. Uh, this went on for several years, and then, I, like, I went to AA, and my conversion experience, yeah. what's important here is it wasn't through clergy. It was through other men, mm. lay people. They saw me. I went to AA. through uh, my, my sponsor was a lay person, and then I got invited to the Catholic Charismatic Renewal. Yeah. 
uh, the first time I went to the prayer meeting, it was the most gentle guy. Because if it was a little girl, Danny, you got to go there. I probably wouldn't have listened to him. But it was one of these, Danny, I really recommend you coming to this meeting. And it was like, will you come? How could I say it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. When I got home, right. I told my wife, I said, this guy bugged me. And she said, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. she was just smiling. Mm -hmm. I went to the prayer meeting and I sat in the back very back of the church and uh, I said I can get out if I don't like it I'll mm -hmm. just sneak out the back row well right before they're going to start two ladies came and sat down they had bags they had Bibles they had, and I was trapped I couldn't get out they were sitting here all of a sudden the prayer meeting started they start raising their hands they start praising the Lord they start doing and all of a sudden it sounded like an attack of bumblebees I said what's going on here I had to look as a crucifix this is a Catholic church mm -hmm. but I looked and they had their eyes closed I looked they had smiles on their faces mm -hmm. I had a frown on my face I said that's what I want Amen. when the meeting was over I couldn't get out of there fast enough mm -hmm. guess who was out there waiting on me that little old man that invited you he says I got another thing. They're going to start a seminar this Wednesday. It's called the Life in the Spirit <laughs> oh my Seminar. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Would you come? Oh. Uh, Benny, uh, oh, please come. Of course, I said, yeah, I'm driving home. Why in the world? I don't want to go to that. So I went there, arms folded. Mm -hmm. I said, well, this is where it really happened. <laughs> About the fifth week we were there, Life in the Spirit Seminar is how the Holy Spirit performs in our life mm -hmm. if we allow him to work in our life. We receive him in baptism and confirmation. We let him lie dormant for all right. these years. The, the lay person was teaching the course. He drew three circles. He said these three circles represent all of us in the world. The first circle had a cross just outside it. The second circle had a cross just inside of it. The third circle had a cross in the middle. This is Jesus Christ and his relationship in our life. He said this first person, the person that has the Lord nowhere in their life. I couldn't relate to that because I had the Lord in my mm -hmm. life at my convenience. Mm -hmm. He said the second person is the person that has the Lord in their life, but the center of the life is something else. Mine was booze and ego. My family, my job, my God revolved around me. Mm -hmm. He said this third person is a person that has the center of the life, Jesus Christ. He has to be the number one. Your job, your, your, your everything that you do. Everything's secondary. Secondary, mm -hmm. it all revolves. When he says that, I didn't have a burning bush experience, but I knew that I knew that I knew that I knew that I had to make Jesus Christ mm. number one in my life. I just said, Lord, please come into my life. Wow, that's powerful. Um, Danny, when you, you're a professional football player, I mean, you've reached, you reached the height yeah. when you were in all of that. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's the tops of you know, your business field. And you don't get there without being a disciplined guy, Yeah. right? And discipline carries over into into Christianity, into your Very faith. Good. I guess I'm just kind of wondering how you could be so disciplined in so many areas, you know, athletically, yeah. and still miss the discipline that comes from faith. I guess it's the same thing in the business field. Guys could really be successful there. Yes. But yet, so it isn't discipline per se, but you've got to see this in relationship to the Lord. How could you be so disciplined and yet so far away? Good question. I had to drive and determination. Where did that come, come from the Lord? From I, I, I never knew anything but don't give up. Don't because if you look at me, I, a lot of guys when I walk in they think six foot five, two hundred and twenty pounds. You know I'm not that. I said I used to be. They knocked me down That's to this right. side. No, I got you. <laughs> but anyway, you I had that yeah. drive and determination. When they told me that I couldn't do it, they can test you on your running skills, all these jumping skills, all this, but they can't look in your heart. Mm -hmm. The same thing in the face. They can't, they didn't know what was inside me. Mm -hmm. right. I knew what was inside me. Plus my dad pushed me all, student ball, you, they don't want to hear nothing about quitting. Mm -hmm. Don't tell me you can't do it <laughs> right. type of thing. So that drove me and that drove me to the, the, the saints that I'll show them 17th round draft choice. I'm, I'm, they're, they're trying to figure out how to get rid of me. Mm -hmm. I'm going to show them different. So I got success, yeah. and that, but I kept saying, I, I did this, mm -hmm. I did this. I, when, when the Lord came into my life as we, but through the, undi it shows you the craziness of alcoholism as a disease, yeah. Yeah. that I saw my mom and dad drink 
And I still dry, I saw the the how it was tear our family apart on many occasions. Yeah. I can remember running down and said, "Dad, don't do that again. I, I'm, you and I are going to have a problem. Yeah. You can't do that." But I still did it. Why did I do it? I'll never know till the day I go to the grave. I, I, I won't know that. But the same drive and determination, once I made my mind up to go to the Lord, I'm 71 now. I have more drive, more determination for the Lord, salvation. So you said something in that your pre-show right there. You said the spiritual battle. If you read Ephesians 6, 12, it says our battle is not against flesh and blood. Mm-hmm. It's against powers and principalities. Mm-hmm. The devil is at running rampant, like in, mm-hmm. in Peter it tells it, like a roaring lion, mm-hmm. chewing up everything in sight. Look what it's doing to feel. Look at the things we're doing in this country. When are we going to stand up? When are men going to stand up? Women are doing their share. Now the women are getting confused. They're, they're going crazy. So now the families are being destroyed. I made up my mind when the Lord, once I turned my life around, the Lord said, Danny, I want you to evangelize Catholic men. I was in adoration. It came to me, Jim, mm-hmm. as clear as anything. That's been 35 years ago. Mm-hmm. I started a prayer group at my house. What did I know? The Lord said, start a prayer group. Lord, a card game maybe, mm-hmm. not a prayer group. <laughs> <laughs> that group is still meeting to this day. We had 12 guys How show up. How many years is that? 35 years 30. ago. Mm-hmm. Guess what? It started with 12. And then someone says, I'll bring a guitar, we'll sing. We start singing and praising the Lord. Then the charism, which is, it took on a character mm-hmm. of itself, sharing. Guys don't know how to share. Hey, how's it going, Jim? Oh, it's going great. He's lying like, hey, it's not going great. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He's maybe hooked on, probably. his marriage is going to pot, but it's, oh, it's going great. So we, we started doing that within... One year, we had 90 men come into my house every first and third month. A lot of my, didn't, my wife was great. We had to move the furniture outside in, in the driveway. Mm-hmm. Guys, I said, don't ring the doorbell. Just come in the house. Mm-hmm. We start, and then finally, we had to spread out and go over. That group, yeah. to this day, still meets. But the determination yeah. that I got from sports and from my background helped me in evangelism. Because right. if you're dealing with men... That's a that's a hard plowing ground. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Men are hard headed. Uh, that you can't. They'll never let you know really what's going on down inside them. And we try to get them to make them feel good. But we got a challenge. When you deal with men, you got to back them in the corner. You can't do that, Jim. The heck I can't. I'll show you. That's what I want from a guy. You mean to tell me sports is good? All this stuff is all great. But you give Lord no time. He doesn't deserve, you can't give the Lord an hour a week or 15 minutes a day. You have to look at your priorities. We challenge him on crossing the goal. And when I go speak, hey, none of this is mine. This is all Jesus Christ. None of this stuff's mine. It's all Christ. So if you have a problem, go see him. So that's, that's sort of been my, my life. But, but you had evidence in your life where you were saying, you know, you were going through the motions of going to church, you were being Catholic to the best of your ability, but you weren't encountering Jesus, right? Personally. Personally. I didn't know him as Jesus Christ. That's what I tried to do. You have to build a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. I knew about Jesus, mm-hmm. but I didn't know him personally. Mm-hmm. The apostles knew about Jesus, mm-hmm. but what happened at Pentecost? The Holy Spirit came down upon them and it says they boldly mm-hmm. proclaimed Jesus Christ. Yeah. The next day, it says, aren't these uneducated men? Mm-hmm. It don't matter how educated. When you go to the Lord, you go full throttle and Lord, mm-hmm. give me the strength. Give me the power. Right. Show me the way. Right. He's going to do that. Right. Because the beauty of our great Jesus is that where we are weak, he makes us strong. Yeah. When we have no story to tell, it becomes his story. It's like, look what I'm going to do with you. Wait till you see all the things, I'm, all the ashes I'm going to bring you out of, and I'm going to have a great story to tell we're about gonna, you. We're going to share more with Danny Abramowitz, having a great conversation here. We want to hear from you. Uh, he's written his new book, Crossing the Goal. We'll be right back. Don't go away.
Welcome back. Well, remember that we want you to be a part of our show. You can call in right now and you can have a question for Danny during our very live broadcast. All you have to do is give us a jingle at 1-800-221-9460. Outside of North America, you can reach us at area code 205-271-2980. You can always send us an email right during the show. There's people working all this to get you on. Jim and Joy at EWTN.com. And hopefully we will use your question right here on the air. Danny, we were sharing about how God, you know, gives us garland out of ashes. Yeah. He takes evil and can turn it into good. You spoke about um, being born again by water and the Spirit in baptism, but yeah. this kind of charismatic experience. Uh, share with us, you know, more about the role of faith, about the Spirit, about what's the game plan, you know, to really grow in the Lord or to, to awaken to right. the Lord personally. Well, the, the, the ashes, you know, I was miserable. I knew exactly what I was doing. I knew I was doing wrong. We know when we're doing wrong. I knew it. I woke up one morning and I looked at my lovely wife in the bed and I got out and went to each of the three children's rooms and I looked at them. And I came back in and I looked in the mirror. I was going to shave. And the first time I looked into the mirror through my eyes into my soul and I mm. saw darkness mm. and I cried out, Lord, yeah. please help me. He'll answer that prayer all the time at his time frame. It's a great theological prayer. Mm -hmm. yes. Please help me. Please help me. <laughs> yeah. But over the he did through this process we talked about. What has to take place is when I said I want to make Jesus number one in my life. Right. That's great words. What is the action behind that? The only way that I could get to know Jesus in a deeper way, and I was fortunate to have Al and Patty Mansfield, the Catholic yeah. Charismatic mm -hmm. Renewal in New Orleans, guide us, not only with life in the Spirit, then the transformation took part with growth in the Spirit. Mm -hmm. And they taught us the Word, the God, the Bible. Yeah. That's where you're going to find out to know Jesus. Yeah. How am I going to find I got It's right there. It's right, right there starting with the Gospels. So that became part of my life, my prayer. If you don't have a prayer life, you don't have a chance out mm -hmm. here. You have no chance. So prayer and scriptures tied into it, the sacramental life, and then being around other like-minded men mm -hmm. and women. You have to get in groups. You know, I say, come to the conference or come to a retreat or come to a mission or whatever. Day of renewal. That's all great. But if you don't have a follow-up, you wasted your time. Mm -hmm. The devil will eat you alive out here. He was tearing me up. He wants us separated so he can tear you up as a group together. What did Jesus, when he came down here, he could have done this by himself. What did he do? He gathered 12 guys and he trained them for three years in his word, in his will. And then what did he do? Did he send them out by himself? He sent them out two by two mm -hmm. to start small groups. And they didn't have churches. They were in homes. They started the group there. They went and ate. They did fellowship with them. Amen. They fished with them. Yeah. They hunted. They did whatever they did. <laughs> then he got them with the word. Mm -hmm. You can't walk in and start. If I start going, brother, let me tell you about the Lord in your life. Danny's done flipped out. Mm -hmm. yeah. If I go in there and tell, yeah, the saints are doing good. This is what my grandkids, what about this? We talk about sports. Then the opportunity presents itself. Mm -hmm. Then you talk about, this is how I believe in Lord. Plus, words are great. You and me and my wife affect our kids by our actions. Mm -hmm. They have seen over the period of years that mom and dad walk the walk yeah. Amen. on a day-to-day -day basis. No substitute and we, for that are, we slip. Mm -hmm. we have, we're weak. We're sinful people, but we get back up. We do our confession. We mm -hmm. do the things that we need to do. They see our prayer time. That's how you affect people's Amen. lives, mm -hmm. right. I think. Yeah. Well, we have Bernadette on the phone. Bernadette, welcome to At Home with Jim and Joy. Your question or your comment for Danny? Yes, thank you. Um, I have two brothers, and uh, out of seven of us children, adult children, and I wonder because I myself, as a sister or a lady, does watch uh, Crossing the Goal, and they've each been married more than two times, 
and I don't know if they really live the faith. So I wondered, and I won't feel bad if I get no response from my brothers, if it would be wise for me to send Danny's book to each of them. <laughs> Thank you, Bernadette. What, what are these women doing watching 50%, 50 percent of our audience are women. See, if you t see, we've got caught up this po political correctness. I'm not, that's why a lot of times I say guys are gang. I mean everyone. I don't have to explain myself every time. When I talk, I'm talking about everyone in the whole world. We're all the same. Mm -hmm. So I want to touch people. It's the content. Don't look, look at what, who's, how it's being delivered with its football. What is being said? All we are is instruments. All the stuff we have on cross and go, all this stuff is all from the catechism and, and scripture. This book, I didn't want to write this book. And that, the Lord told me to do it. This book is an absolute tool, a non-threatening tool for someone, this lady with her two sons. Mm -hmm. Do me, uh, what's her name again? Bernadette. 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 Here's what you do. And they'll do it because when Jesus, when, when, when Mary went to Jesus, every time he went there, says, I want you to do this, he did it for his mother. Mm -hmm. Just common sense he did mm -hmm. it. So if you tell your boys to please do you a favor and read this book. Then what happens, they get it, they might throw it down. Throw it down again. Eventually, you know what they're going to do? They're going to open it. The Holy Spirit takes over. You're out of the picture. Then they start reading it. They will be touched by this some kind of way. Then you follow up, tell them, watch Cross and the Gold shows. And then eventually, uh, the Lord's going to take and bring these boys back into the fold, just like I was brought why, back. Why wouldn't it be threatening, though? I mean, you're so on fire. One of your key themes is a call to holiness. So what is it that wouldn't be non-threatening to them? Is it your own transparency? No, no, in terms of your own? meaning non-threatening to go. See, we started the, the new evangelization. You notice it's failed. The reason being, uh, Bob, can you tell me about the Mets and the, and the Giants? Oh, yeah, let me tell you about that game. Yeah. What about that restaurant? Oh, that restaurant was good. What about Jesus Christ? Who? Mm -hmm. We don't. How can you evangelize something you don't know? Mm -hmm. Guys are afraid to go. They won't even do it in their own family. The, the, you're, you're over the, the old man's conning the kids. The kids aren't stupid. They know you don't know. They know you're not mm -hmm. practicing the faith. Mm -hmm. They're seeing how you're treating your wife. Mm -hmm. You're not going to trick these kids. They wonder why they got this stuff in their ear. They're sick and tired of seeing all this stuff out here. Mm -hmm. But if you go over there and say, how hard is that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's non-threatening. This person yeah. is non-threatening. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. What he does with that book, yeah. he can throw it in the trash can. I don't know what he's going to do. Yeah. I think he's going to, because what's he see? He sees the oh, football. He, he right. sees the stuff mm -hmm. on there. We'll see if you can catch this. Yeah. <laughs> okay. He's going to go and he's going to open this up. He's going to start looking. That's why at the beginning it starts talking about it, funny names, funny. Th you can't be, yeah. we take ourselves too serious. Right. We can't be serious all the time. Mm -hmm. We're, we're, we're weak people. Well, we have, to, we have to be relational. Jesus was relational. Right. I mean, and so if we, if we just pull out, okay, this is how I am when I'm religious. This is how I am. I mean, we are integrated. It's all a part of who right. we are. Or you don't do, don't do this and don't right. do that. Don't, right. Wait a minute. And you can't be a, a hypocrite. Let's, let's, you can't be a mm -hmm. hypocrite. Mm -hmm. they're, seeing, they're watching every step you make. Mm -hmm. They're seeing what you do, mm -hmm. how you act, how you treat your wife, mm -hmm. how your wife treats the husband. They're, that's how they see it. Right. People see that. And because it has to be authentic. With Gotta them. be. Okay, we got Mary on the phone. Mary, welcome to At Home with Jim and Joy. Your question or your comment for Danny? Mary? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't hear you. Uh, yes, I'm here. Um, um, Danny? Yes. Uh, I, I can't pronounce for last day. Didn't Don't worry you? about it. I had a long time before <laughs> I could pronounce it. So, you see, I thought, because I had a brief hard experience with the Lord. I was passing an experience. In fact, I had three of them. So, uh, I understand everything everybody said. So, how uh, can you say you have reached your goal? Uh, 
Um, I think it's I real. Th yeah, you know, it's really hard to understand you, Mary. Um, it's not Mary. It's the it's the technical yeah, hookup. So we're yeah. having a little technical problems, yeah. and either they'll write out what you're saying, or you can try and call us back. I thought it was revolving revolving around the book a little bit. Yeah. Uh, but um, you you were sharing about non-threatening to give something to someone. Yes. And I was referring to the book itself. Uh, it's a threatening book in the sense that you're really calling people to high and beautiful things. But yes. It's non-threatening because you are transparent. I mean, which is really obvious here. And so a guy can see himself in there. And it's really a St. Paul kind of thing. You know, the things I want to do, I don't do. The things I don't want to do, I do do. Who will exactly. deliver me from this? And I think everybody can relate to that. No, I think that's your story. And it, it, it doesn't have to be as dramatic. You know, a lot of people say, I don't do much. I said, you mean to tell me the Lord put us down here not to do anything? Mm -hmm. I think, mm -hmm. he, you know, you're setting the bar. We're setting the bar too low. Right. I think with this is we all have something we're dealing with in life. The tragedy happened. You know, you had a heart attack. Yeah. I had a heart attack in my yeah. life. That's part of life. You mm -hmm. know, that's what you, you get up and you get moving. You mm -hmm. go move on. When he calls, we, we don't have no say. So right. I, if I had to choose, Danny, do you want to have a heart attack? No, thank you. Mm -hmm. no, no, I, I don't. <laughs> but I did. Right. But there was a good that comes out of all that mm -hmm. stuff. What, what has to happen is this book will take a person. Here's a kid from just norm, just like you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I played in the NFL. That's not who I'm about. Mm -hmm is the values. I was in the NFL, was a phony, a liar, a cheat, but I was a, a good person really down deep inside. Mm -hmm. I was lost though. Yeah. Once I turned my life around, that's what it talks about. Mm -hmm. And then look at the beauty of walking with the Lord yeah. and how it's touched other guys. And a lot of guys came to my house because what's that saint guy doing? Now, once they came there and they sat down and we started prep, the Holy Spirit was all yeah. over mm -hmm. them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then they saw, when a guy starts sharing, let me tell you about my son or my life, look what I did. Mm -hmm. Other right. guy says that. It made him feel to Like he share. could tell his story. He could right. tell his mm -hmm. story. Right. See what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah, because they feel safe. They feel you safe. You know, and that's, so, so many times, we think as men and, you know, I mean, I had dads and brothers and they never they don't share your feelings. Everybody's good, yeah. strong, stoic people. And it's kind of like pull up your socks, dry your eyes and just do your day. Yeah. It's we just be tough. But you don't, you know, when you get in that kind of environment, it's like, you know, I'm hurting too. And yes. gee, I didn't know that was going on. And, and you can be weak as a man, but men don't let themselves be weak, right? Because you don't want to admit that you're weak, but that's the only place then can, that Jesus that's can come. That's the only come. time. Jim and Joy, listen to this. When I was growing up, my parents were, I loved them, but it was a Latin mass. That's why you ever notice a lot of real old people have rosary beads at mass all the time. They didn't know what was going on at mm -hmm. mass a lot mm -hmm. of times. So uh, I went through college. I wasn't walk, walking, I was going to church, but I wasn't walking how you should be. I got with the saints. I was going to church. I was lost. I was drinking. I was doing. From all the way back then, as I looked after my conversion experience, my mom and dad, no relative, no priest, no nun, nobody told me, Danny, do you know Jesus Christ? Mm. You know Not him. one person mm. of all those years. Once I converted, I said, that will never, mm. ever happen to me in my life. There's a scripture passage that makes my hair stand up on that. It says, if you acknowledge me before man, I will acknowledge you before my heavenly father. If you deny me before man, mm -hmm. I will deny. He won't get me on that. Mm -hmm. He's going to get me on a lot of other right. things, but not that yeah. one. Because I will proclaim his name. And guys out here, if, you're, if you do it sincerely in the right way, guys are open because they don't know. They don't, they're searching mm -hmm but they don't know what they're searching for. Right. And St. Augustine says what? Our hearts will never rest yeah. mm -hmm. until, until we rest, rest with thee. And you know, so, right. so, oh, we got somebody on the phone. Yeah, now. we got George on the phone. George, welcome to At Home with Jim and Joy. Your question or your comment for Danny. Yeah, Danny, it's really a good show that you have today. And along with Jim and Joy and everything else, keep oh, up. It's your show work. now with Jim and Joy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. Go right ahead. No, yeah. thank you. <laughs> okay. Hey, my question is, Dan, how do you get the, uh, the players pumped up in the huddle to say uh, a prayer as you do. How, how do I get the players to? Uh, 
when I coached in high school, that was part of the deal we did. We started practice, we end practice with a prayer. A lot of times when I got to the pros, you know, it's a different ball game. I'd say, uh, in a meeting, I'd say, guys, why don't we start with a prayer? How's that sound? I'd never heard one guy say no. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you have to be respectful. Instead of Jesus Christ, I would use the Father of God mm -hmm. or something mm -hmm. like that. Just that way. Don't be afraid. Be bold. Don't, don't be afraid. Praying with people, men, praying with them in my own life, with other people that I pray for. Too many of us Catholics don't pray with, and I'm not talking about our standard important prayers right. to the Lord. I mean, it's like after you share something, say, would you like to pray about that? Or, you know, you might say, I never had an invitation like that to know Jesus personally. I mean, he's in me through baptism and so on, but I didn't know I had to do anything. When you to actually pray activates, loosens. Oh, and it and gets you out of the uh, out of the. But box. we're just simply not doing right. it. And it is an important step because that's part of God's character to say, I'm not just going to make you like a puppet. You have to kiss me back. I'm trying to kiss you here or I'm trying exactly. to embrace you here. And you've got to give yourself. And we would just pray with people, invite them. And you don't got to be a theologian to do that. Just real pray. It's amazing what happens when somebody says, yes, I want you here. I mean, I place you A lot you of here. times we want to get out of it and say, I'll pray for you. Right. Perfect pray story. Then, now. Pray. Uh, I, I was downtown New Orleans. I'm walking down the street. And, a, and a, a lady walks past me this way. Now, that's, there's a bunch of people walking. Mm -hmm. The Lord says, I want you to pray for that lady. Mm -hmm. I'm saying, this is, I'm, this is my imagination. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So she's walking further. I'm walking this way. Go back and pray for that lady. Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh. Right then and there, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. I said, Lord, I keep walking. He says, one more time, go pray with that lady. So I ran down there because, you know, now this day, this was, mm -hmm. I said, excuse me, ma'am. I says, I know you think I'm probably crazy or nuts, a nutball or whatever. I said, the Lord wants me to pray for you for whatever reason. Do you mind if I do it? She says, oh, would you please? Mm -hmm. I said, such a heavy bird. She started crying. Mm -hmm. I started praying with her. From that day, I said, I'll never, I, I always, I said, I might forget the prayer. I'm going to yeah. lay hands. And a lot of times you can be praying with somebody. It, it, kids don't want to do it. I'm, I'm right now praying for her. She doesn't even know it, but mm -hmm. I'm praying with mm -hmm. her, mm -hmm. right. praying yeah. for her. No, it's really true. And it's so many people are hurting. hurting. And it's just like, why, why can't we extend ourselves and just say, can I pray with you? Can, you know, because if someone's going to share their heart with you, you want to be able, you, you and I can't do anything about it. I can't no heal cancer or heart attacks. We can't do those things. We can't fix marital problems, family problems, but we can go to the healer. And say, look, then let's just take your burden and bring it to Jesus, and maybe He can do something about when it. When we lay, you look in scriptures. How many times are talking about laying on the hands? Right. Mm -hmm. Jesus. It was not only Jesus, His disciple, all kind of but laying on the hands. Mm -hmm. You lay hands on. I tell a lot of times, husband and wife. Like I see you guys mm -hmm. holding hands. Mm -hmm. Pray together. Right. Every single day. The family that prays together. Stay, that's not just some kind of mm -hmm. like a hocus right. pocus little story. It's the truth. Praying together, laying hands. I said, you know, you're pregnant. Mm -hmm. Son, put your hand on your wife's belly mm -hmm. and pray for that child. Mm -hmm. Pray for a, a person ready to have abortion. Right. You guys, what do you do? You mm -hmm. pray with them. Mm -hmm. Pray with one another. Don't be afraid. We're, we can't, as long as you know, what's Paul say? When I'm weakest, that's when I'm strongest. Mm -hmm. I know that. When I'm, when I'm into myself, I'm scared to death. When I trust in the Lord, I, I, it could be all cardinals out mm -hmm. here with the Pope there. That's right. When I'm talking about Jesus, no problem. Mm -hmm. This is how I look at Jesus Christ. I, I'm not a theologian, but I know I have the Lord in my heart mm -hmm. and I try to do it. I love the Lord and I'll do whatever I got. If he tells me to go, I got to go. Mm -hmm. Danny, do what I got to do. Thank you so much for your witness, for your transparency, for your giving glory to God. For your work, especially among men. Thank, Thank you so you. very, Thank you for having very me. much. God really, bless you. Thank you, guys. It's Crossing the Goal. Go to crossingthegoal.com, EWTNRC.com. Get the book. We'll be right back. Please don't go away. There's more to come.
Welcome back. Well, you know, you are an important part of our EWTN family, and you know you can join us live right here. You could have been in our audience. You could have met Danny. You could meet Father Joseph. You could meet me and Jim. We would love to have you. And you could be a member. We have an audience today, and they're from all over the place. All you need to do is contact the EWTN Pilgrimage Department. You can email them, pilgrimages at EWTN.com. Give them a jingle at 205 271 to 966 and they will make all those arrangements happen for you. So come to Birmingham, Irondale, Alabama. We'd love to have you. Well, right now we're going to go straight to Rome to hear from Joan and she's talking sports with the Pope today. Joan? <laughs> well, greetings from Rome to everyone at home and you know what? I also bring you greetings from Portugal. I actually met two big EWTN fans last night at a concert at the Church of Sant Antonio de Portuguesi, the National Church of the Portuguese here in Rome. The choir from the Basilica Shrine in Washington is on concert here in Rome, and uh, Luis and Maria, his wife, uh, were also attending this concert, and they came up to me afterwards and, oh, thank you, EWTN, for all that you do, and they specifically mentioned Jones Rome, and they mentioned At Home with Jim and Joy. So I thought I really wanted to share that with you. And I also want to share with you, of course, some, uh, something else from yesterday, and that is to say Pope Francis's remarks. He spoke to the first ever global conference on sports and faith, and uh, they were meeting on the theme um, sports at the service of humanity. Now, we all know that sports are big in families, and they can either bring families together or they can divide families. That is to say, when there's no time for family meals or other family events because kids are out of the house practicing for sports. Now, the Pope said, sport is a human activity of great value, able to enrich people's lives, and it's enjoyed by men and women of all kinds of faiths and nations and ethnic backgrounds. And he s said in particular, it's good to know the world's sporting institutions have taken so much to heart the value of inclusion. He said the Paralympic movement, the Special Olympics, and other organizations that help those with disabilities, they have a decisive role in helping the public recognize and admire the extraordinary performances of those who might have different capabilities and uh, talents. And Francis also noted, however, a challenge for sports. He said the challenge of maintaining the honesty of sport, of protecting it from manipulation and commercial abuse. He said it would be sad for sports and for humanity if people were unable to trust in the truth of sporting results, or if cynicism were to drown out enthusiasm or joyful participation. And most importantly, he said, in sports, as in life, Competing is very important, but playing well and fairly is much more important. So, some more jewels from Pro Pope Francis, but uh, time's up here, so back to you at home. Thank you, Joan. Powerful report. It's amazing that the Holy <laughs> Father is speaking about sports and the benefit yes. of sports. We have Danny Abramovitz on. Did you play some sports? I think I... I did. I, I did. I started, uh, I played football my freshman year, but I was a little guy... Yeah. And I was a cornerback, and they ran this sweep, but I got really yeah. nailed. <laughs> and I said, this is my last this year is, for football. <laughs> you were too so smart that I, for football. I thought I would pick on other guys my own size, so I went to wrestling. There so. you go. <laughs> Good. That's Good. funny to, to think of you as a wrestler. Yes. Yeah. So it's big in Iowa, where I grew up. It so is. So I started at 105 and then finished at 132, so... And you're still 132 now. <laughs> That's good. A little more than and that. And now you're yes. wrestling powers and principalities, yes. right? Yes. God, God uses all those things. I mean, and, and we were really athletic in our families, and you learn so many good disciplines. There are so many mm -hmm. good things that come out of doing, being what you want to be on a team, you lose in, it's not fun, right? right? Mm -hmm. Teaches you perseverance and discipline. And, you know, I think one of the things that keeps men from really embracing their faith is that they think they have to give up their masculinity to embrace the faith for, you know, false understanding of the faith. So that's why it's so important for men like Danny and the Crossing the Goal team to show that that's not really the case. Mm -hmm. In fact, real men are those who live the faith, who follow Jesus, who have that courage and zeal that our Lord himself had. Mm -hmm. Right. So many 
Bible passages too, you know. I pummel my body and I bring it into submission to the mm -hmm. will of the Lord. I don't shadow box, I truly right. hit. Um, I run the to race. win, mm -hmm. I fight to win. Um, I finish the race, I've kept the faith. Mm -hmm. um, so many sports illustrations and like I was saying to Danny, though, you could be so involved in sports and still miss the Lord in it. But when you make that link, I mean, there's so many wonderful Christians who were athletes and wonderful Christians who were military people mm -hmm. who were so far away from the Lord, right. who were so disciplined. And then they get, I want to serve the Lord. I want to be part of this ultimate nation and to serve in this way. Disciple has to do with discipline. Mm -hmm. And I think Satan right. can really move in when we're not disciplined. Catechism mm -hmm. speaks about a life of self-mastery and discipline, grace-filled, grace-filled grace discipline, not a mm -hmm. works kind of righteousness. Right. Yeah. And what St. Paul is saying in all of that is that it's a choice, mm -hmm. and we must continue to choose the Lord. We must continue yeah. to strive to fight the good fight, to mm -hmm. run the race, keep our eye on the goal, mm -hmm. right? So it's like, let's continue going. The Lord's going to give us the strength and let's have the confidence that the Lord will help us through the obstacles and challenges and difficulties that we will face, just like we do in sports, right? Mm -hmm. We just keep Amen. continuing on. Amen. Mm -hmm. right? Father, give us a blessing that we might finish the race. All right. Father, we thank you for bringing us to this point in our lives, beginning a good work in us, and we ask you to bring it to completion. Help us to keep our eyes fixed on your son, Jesus, who inspires and perfects our faith. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank, Thank you, you so Father. much for being a part of the EWTN family. All of us together encouraging one another in our faith that we all might cross the goal and spend eternity with him. God bless you and all of your loved ones. Bye now. Keep it on EWTN.